Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be integrating a very interesting function. So we are looking at the indefinite integral of negative one to the power x dx. So we're going to talk about uh, what kind of function this is. Uh, we'll talk about the integral of an exponential function in general. I'm also going to show you something pretty interesting. Anyways, if you try to integrate something like a to the power x dx, then you get a to the power x divided by log a. By the way, log means ln in Wolfram Alpha world. So you could easily replace this with ln. That's what it means. Okay, the natural log of a. And then, of course, the plus a constant, something that you should never forget if you're doing freshman calculus, right? Especially and if your teacher is kind of like picky about these things. If you don't add the constant, then you could be in big trouble. Anyway, so that's how we integrate. And where does this come from? If you think about the derivative of a to the power x, the derivative of a to the power x is a to the power x times ln a. So if you're trying to find the function whose derivative is just a to the x, you kind of have, you need to adjust by this constant. Of course, it just becomes division because it's the uh, reversal, uh, reversal process, okay? But here's something interesting about this scenario is that a is equal to a negative one. Normally, when you define an exponential function, the base is supposed to be positive. What happens when the base is negative, we're gonna see. But before that, let's also talk about the derivative of e to the power x. That will be e to the x times ln e, but ln e is one, so we don't write it. In other words, e to the power x is a very, very special function whose derivative and integral equals itself. Of course, with the integration, it's a little tricky because you have to include the constant of integration, which is usually written as c. And what happens when you differentiate c? You get zero because it's the rate of change of a constant, which is not a variable, which doesn't vary. Okay, so having said that, let's go ahead and take a look at something that I find interesting is the graph of f of x equals negative one to the power x. What does it look like to you? A bunch of dots, right? Obviously, when you graph this in Desmos, this is what you get. But if you try to zoom in, these dots will probably disappear. I haven't tried it. I just wanted to take a screenshot so I wouldn't lose these because that happened before. A lot of these continuities. And what happens at the negative values? You kind of need to think about it this way. In order to be able to graph it, we need to get real y values. So for example, if x is equal to 1 half, then you get something like negative 1 to the power 1 half. And obviously, you're going to realize uh, at that point you shouldn't have an image because this is not real. Negative 1 to the power 1 half can be interpreted as a complex number, like the square roots of negative 1, the principal one being i and the other one being negative i. But of course, you can't uh, show these on the real coordinate plane. By the way, if you have a complex function, you cannot graph it because it is four-dimensional. Anyways, that's a different story, but this is the graph of negative one to the power x with lots of lots of discontinuities. So, how do you integrate something like this? Is there any area under this curve? Obviously, it's not like y equals one, where the area under y equals one would be pretty straightforward. In this case, we have a huge problem. Anyways, let's go ahead and see how we can handle something like this. And I'm going to start by using the definition or the formula that is pretty standard with exponential functions. So according to Wolfram Alpha and pretty much any other textbook, or I guess, or any calculator, if you integrate a to the x, you're going to get that. So suppose you replace, no, that's the big thing, like suppose this is true. Suppose a is equal to negative 1, then we should be getting negative 1 to the power x divided by ln of negative 1 plus c. Uh-oh. We got something that is not well defined, at least in the real world, right? What is the natural log of a negative number? Well, first of all, in the real world, complex numbers do not exist, right? Obviously. And we do have y equals ln x that looks like this which intersects the x-axis at x equals 1 because ln 1 is equal to 0. And as x approaches 0 from the right, ln x will approach negative infinity, right? That's why we have an asymptote, a vertical asymptote at 
x equals 0. And as x approaches infinity, y is going to approach infinity. It's all good. No horizontal asymptotes. That's what it is. Basically, we have a domain. In other words, x needs to be positive in order for our ln function to be well defined. By the way, this is the graph of y equals ln x. And pretty much any log function, if you just change the base, the curve is going to curve a little differently, but it's pretty much going to be the shape. The shape is pretty much going to be the same thing. Okay? So, let's go ahead and take a look. We can definitely interpret this in the complex world, like what is ln negative 1, but we can also use the uh, exponential form, the polar form, thanks to Euler. Uh, you know, we've got to give him a lot of credit because he's amazing. So, how do you write negative 1 to the power x in a nicer form? Obviously, if you have an exponential function, you can always express it using a different base, which is base e. That would be our preferred base to be able to use the uh, formula. So, in general, z to the w is e to the power w ln z. And in this case, you can kind of write this as e to the power x ln negative 1. And again, if you go back here, ln negative 1 comes up and when you differentiate this or integrate this you're going to end up with the same thing because you need to divide by ln negative 1. Remember something you say you have something like e to the power 2x if you're trying to integrate it it would give you e to the 2x but then you have to divide by 2 which is the coefficient of x. In this case this happens to be the coefficient that's why you're going to divide. You could do this or you can think of it this way too. How do you write negative 1 in a complex world? You can write it as e to the power i pi. Right? That's just the principal form, the principal value, because you're allowed to add. You could also write this as pi plus 2 pi n, but I'm just going to keep it simple and just write it as follows. Make sense? And then, of course, I'm going to raise it to the power x. That's going to give me e to the power i pi x. Now, we can go ahead and integrate negative 1 to the power x easily, because now we have it in exponential form, which is e to the i pi x dx. And according to the formula, or if you think about it, what is e to the power some constant x, e to the kx dx? Re remember, that would be e to the power kx divided by k plus c. So you would do e to the power i pi x divided by i pi plus c. But of course, you don't want the i at the bottom, do you? So you would probably just multiply by i or negative i. Negative i would be better, so you would get negative i e to the power i pi x divided by negative i squared, which is 1, over pi plus c. Great. You can also make this a little greater. I mean, not necessarily, but remember where e to the i pi x come from? This is actually negative 1 to the power x, so you can kind of write this as negative i times negative 1 to the x divided by pi plus c. It will be equivalent, but I guess uh, the first version is probably better. And let me tell you something. You could also do this with a definite integral. This is the indefinite integral, as I told you. This is basically what it looks like. Thanks to from alpha, we can get the answer. And there is a definite form, which I believe is called a half a period or something like that. From 0 to 1, if you integrate, you're going to get 2i over pi, which is 0.63662i. So that's an imaginary number if you integrate it from 0 to 1. So the area under this curve is imaginary. You're just imagining it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.